It is Friday the 10th of November. This is the Cat's Whiskers podcast and this one's going to be a little bit different. So myself, Ant and Adam, we are uh, sat around a table in our hotel bar in Berwick-upon-Tweed. We decided we're going to, we were going to come up to Scotland anyway, regardless of the fact that, you know, the, the Panthers team, the organisation, they're still in the process of putting themselves you know, back together and recovering from everything that's happened. We're we're, we're here. Um, You know, we're going to, we're going to make, make the most of our trip. And in a way, I think ourselves, along with a lot of you guys who are listening, whether you be Panthers fans or otherwise, I think there's, there's still a bit of healing going on amongst us as well. So, in a way, I suppose this is kind of us easing ourselves back into it because there's been an awful lot that's, that's happened uh, in, in the last couple of weeks. So since the unfortunate passing of, of Adam Johnson, there's been a lot of shock. There's been a lot of... I, I don't... Chaos, I suppose, is, is, is a word you could throw in there. But there's also been a lot of heartwarming incidents you know a lot of you know a lot of love a lot of support and I think that's something we definitely like to focus on now that the dust is starting to settle around the actual incident itself so we don't really know where we're going with this yet so we're just all sat around the table we're all having a drink we're in a bar, and that's kind the bar, of... The bar of the hotel, the bar yeah. of the hotel. Yeah, the bar of the hotel. And, and this is where we like to do our talking. This is where we prefer to it's, it's, collect. It's, it's, it's a way of... This is, this is, this is going to be hard, and I've, I've started to go already. And I didn't think I'd be this bad. Um, because we've had time and we've 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 been out between us. We've we, you know we were out on the day afterwards. We, we we came together as a group. We were out last Saturday as we were planned to be anyway. We came together as a group, and we've talked about it a lot. I mean be, between us, we've had conversations. Um, with, there's there's been obviously a lot of hugs, a lot of tears, a lot of. Oh my effing god! I don't know how we, you know, how to, to to describe what's going on. But there's also been a lot of laughter, and we we were saying on on that Sunday, Tina, when we were in Salt Marks, um, we sat there, and then one minute we'd just be like silence and what have you. We don't know what to say, and then then we'd be laughing and joking about something stupid and what have you. Um, this is going to be hard. I mean, going with. Thank you very much, Dundee Stars, for swapping our tickets over. We've managed to to uh, give us tickets, so we're going to see Stars against Clan on Sunday. And I, I massively appreciate the Fife and Dundee for you know sorting our tickets out. You know, in that regard, going into that rink on Sunday, I still don't know how I'm going to feel. Um, I know that the pair of you were able to go to the memorial last Saturday. I couldn't face going into it at the time, so I. I this is a tough time ahead, but I couldn't ask for a better set of people to be, to, be, to be around and to be involved with to get us through this. And just touching on that, 
I'd like to thank the Panthers and the Elite League and the Sheffield Steelers for the way they've handled things and conducted themselves and everything during this. Yeah, I mean, that, that is definitely something that I think we should focus on because, Adam, this is an unprecedented event. Surely, no elite, certainly no elite league club has prepared themselves specifically for something like this. So, you know, and, and, and just focusing on our own club for a second, I personally could not be prouder of how they've conducted themselves, how they've handled everything. It has been nothing short of flawless. It's, uh, it's hard to disagree with that, to be honest. I think the, the way that our club have conducted themselves through... You know, the, the darkest of dark times has been, you know, absolutely impeccable. You know, there's, there's no textbook for this. There's no manual that you sort of can go and have a look at to see how you can prepare for something so, you know, emotionally draining. Um, you know, the, the adversity that was thrown up by, you know, Adam's tragic passing, it's absolutely incredible in terms of the you know, the, the hockey world and how it's sort of reached out, you know, it's, I, I mean, I don't know about other people, but I felt slightly uneasy in some ways that the Nottingham Panthers Ice Hockey Club have been the actual centre of the hockey universe since the, you know, since the sad passing of Adam. You know, it feels like everyone's looking in our direction. You know, there's, there's, you know, nowhere to escape to almost. So if you think about that, and then you sort of square that with the way that the club have dealt with with everything, you know, all of the press releases probably, you know, all the, re- all the requests for media and that sort of thing. You know, that I think at every level of the club, the organisation has excelled and, you know, they've struck such a an empathetic tone, you know, with fans, with sponsors, no doubt, and everybody that's been, you know, slightly inconvenienced. Now, I don't like to use the word inconvenience, you know, when we talk about something so tragic, but, um, you know, there's just been so many subsequent moving parts that have had to have been, you know, arranged at very short notice. And, you know, I know Ant's, you know, given thanks to so many people and clubs and organisations, but, you know, I, I want to reiterate that because I think it, it does feel like everyone has gone, you know way over and beyond to sort of look out for for the Nottingham Panthers, you know, over the last few days. And, you know, I think we'll all be eternally grateful for the way that, you know, organisations, plans have all been changed, you know, at very, very short notice to, you know, help the club and help the players to, you know, come to terms with what's happened and just sort of ease themselves back into some sense of normality. It's not going to be easy and it's not going to be a quick fix, but... um, it's nice to know that, you know, when when the players are ready, when the staff are ready, you know, we'll all be there. You know, we're, we'll, we're not going anywhere um, and we'll support emotionally and physically to the absolute hill. So uh, it's certainly the most sort of trying few days that I've ever had as an ice hockey fan. You know, I, I go back to the mid 90s and, you know, th- this is just unprecedented and I've got no reference point. I simply don't have a reference point. So... You know, we're all we're all dealing with raw emotions still. You know, we're all in uncharted territory. And I'll admit, you know, it's going to take me a long time as a fan to get over this. So, you know, if it's going to take me a long time as a fan to get over it, I can only think of how long it will take our players and coaching staff to get over it. So, you know, all of our hearts are with them. You know, we're all thinking of them day in, day out. Um, and, you know, it's... It's just interesting being away this weekend because I, I didn't know what to expect, you know, what emotions I'd feel. Um, you know, I'm going to probably go through the whole roller coaster of emotions over the course of the weekend. There'll be great times and there'll be times where you just want to walk away and maybe, you know, find a corner of a room and, you know, just quietly reflect. So um, I'm sort of bracing myself for a bit of an emotional roller coaster. This is, I mean, for me, this is important that we've. We've managed to get tickets for the Sunday, the game on Sunday, and getting back in. Yes, it's not the Panthers that are playing, but getting back into a rink again, I think, is going to be huge. Um, I just wanted to touch on what 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 Adam mentioned about the like no reference point. As a good friend of ours, um, Paul Radford has was a season ticket holder for the longest time, and then gave his season ticket up like the year before COVID. Since then, he's been to odd games. 
and <clears throat> he we, we've had lot, lots of chats together and stuff like that and he feels like he's in a position where he's not allowed to grieve or anything like that because this is a strange thing because Adam Johnson is not somebody that we knew we, I, I mean I personally not met, met him he was somebody that played for our club so on that respect as I get where Paul's saying is like he doesn't feel like he's allowed to, to be upset or allowed to grieve and we're all in, this, I think, a similar thing. I, I've, I've said this so many yeah. times. You, you don't feel like you have a right because you're not friends, family, teammates. Yeah. But, but we're invested in the team. Exactly. And Adam, and exactly. Adam is part, you know, he, he was part of the team. So, yeah. you, 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 and you, we, we certainly, the, you know, three of us, the, the guys and girls that we are with behind us, and anybody who's ever felt like they had a connection to the team, we pour our heart and soul into supporting that team. And we want each and every yeah. one of them to do their best best do well and and you know and and come out with you know whatever the ultimate prize is you know you want to win trophies you want the the the, the good and the euphoria and, and and everything that comes with competitive sports the team is a massive part of our lives sorry adam i know you were trying to come in was that the closest thing and this is what you were talking about reference the closest thing i can link link this to is the night my cousin and i having just watched United win the FA Cup. We were up until four in the morning and we watched the over the edge pay per view, wrestling pay per view, and it was the night Owen Hart died. Again, Owen's not somebody I'd ever met, but he's somebody that I'd watched for so long and enjoyed their performance for so long that it, it, it did and it hit hard. And it's still, even now to this day, it's, it's you know, things like that that's, that still hit hard. And this is the closest thing I can, I can link to it in the fact that I've, I've, I've sadly lost friends, I've lost family. Th- this isn't any different because the Panthers are such a massive part of my life. The, the club is hurting and naturally I'm feeding off that and I'm hurting and it was such a shocking way to go Adam we were at a gig weren't we we were, we were at a gig and we were trying to enjoy ourselves and we were up and down that night weren't we because we were just refreshing X constantly like trying to get updates and oh my god what's happened and it you know Ella we've got to mention Ella who, who came and sat with us um, she used to run the, the Bunkers Hill she, she now runs the, the pub that we're in she came and sat with us and went through two bottles of wine and said, oh, what have you. But, and you, you got um, loved by the dog. <laughs> yes, by Albie. <laughs> yeah. yep. Ella's dog, Albie, was proving to be rather affectionate that night. It's what, 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 kind of what we needed at the time, though, wasn't it? Yeah, Cause it was, I mean, look, we, there was so much uncertainty at the time. <coughs> you know, we weren't physically there. You know, we didn't know what was going on. All we could do was base our sort of understanding on what was on social media. And, you know, there was some very, very worrying and very sort of disturbing accounts of, of what had gone on. And I didn't know what to feel that night. You know, after seeing that and after hearing what had happened, you know, good friends of ours were at the game. Some of the things that were coming out were you know, bleak, to put it mildly. And, um, I mean, it took the shine off the night. I know, I know we tried to sort of carry on and, um, you know, enjoy each other's company, but... You know, I think we all went to bed that night wondering what was going to sort of await us the following morning. And, you know, in my, in my view, I call me naive, but I thought that some sort of miracle might have happened over the course of the night. And, you know, young, fit hockey player would have sort of, you know, had the stamina and had the sort of inner energy to, to recover from something so, you know, tragically uh, bad. But... You know, there are certain things that, you know, somebody just can't rebound from. And, you know, Sunday morning, you know, we woke up and, and we learned about, you know, Adam's tragic passing. And, um, yeah, look, I mean, I know certain people went to, the, uh, went to the arena and met. I know you two both went to the arena to, to meet. I just couldn't. You know, people react in different ways to this. You know, well, I mean that, that, that goes with like you guys went into the the, the, the arena on yeah. the, on the menorah. And I couldn't. Yeah, place doing it. I mean, I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah, so like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, I can completely see the benefits of of being together. You know, in these 
these times of, you know, just deep and utter sadness, you know, and everyone probably was consoling one another, you know, and I, I read so much and, you know, saw messages that, that you were all exchanging on the WhatsApp groups and, you know, I, I just, part of me wanted to be there, but a bigger part of me didn't want to be there because I didn't know how I'd control my emotions. I really didn't. And maybe it would have done me the world of good to actually have been there and to, you know, let it all out and, you know, have a good cry, have a good sob and sort of, um, you know, just be in the vicinity of, of people that, you know, I care for and have got a lot of time for. And, um, you know, I'll never get another opportunity to do that. And quite frankly, I don't want another opportunity to go to the arena to mourn the loss of one of the Panthers players because I hope it never happens to another hockey player, you know, for as long as hockey's played on this planet. But for me, I just needed to be alone on that Sunday. Um, it was a conscious decision. And, you know, last Saturday, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about this maybe in a few minutes, but um, the club, the arena, the organisation, they got everything absolutely perfect. You know, they organised everything impeccably. And, you know, I can't speak highly enough of everybody that was involved and, in, you know, organising the, the event because for such a, for such a sombre occasion, you know, it comes back to what Ant was saying you know there, there has been laughter albeit with heavy hearts in the last week but it's been nice to see people laugh you know and smile even if it's just remembering some of the memories they've got of Adam and I know he wasn't a Panther for very long but I think you know he made a, a very very big impression you know with the Panthers fan base in, in those few short weeks and months that he was with us and then you know subsequently since his passing some of the tributes and eulogies of you know of I'm not going to lie, you know, it made me cry reading them and, and watching them and, you know, the, the memorial that was held in Hibbing, you know, that. <laughs> Some of the things that have been said about Adam was just absolutely beautiful, you know, which sort of showed how high esteem people held him in and you know, just what an amazing human being he was. And, you know, fans, colleagues, friends, family, everyone's going to miss him so, so much. I think I just want to touch on... The, the 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 various things that you know have, have happened over the last couple of weeks. So, you know, you've you've both kind of kind of mentioned that the day after you have to give a shout out to the arena. They already had something set up, ready for you know fans to to leave tribute. That that was lovely. They already had staff ready to receive people, and it was it was just so. It was just so nice just to see the, you know, the, the, the welcome and the warmth from, from them, you know, and the understanding that we were going to be there. The fact that other teams have been so accommodating in, you know, because, you know, with, with the best will in the world, life, life has to go on. Cardiff and Manchester rearranging those games yes. so quickly yeah, exactly. to get games played that weekend. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we, we touched on this, it always seems to be Cardiff that, that <laughs> tend to, to move around. And as much as I don't like the Cardiff Devils, my hat's off to that organisation behind the scenes for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. But, and yes, yeah, so then, then we moved on to the memorial service at the arena. And that was organised fantastically. And, and one of the nice things, that, well, I, I, you, know, you, you, you probably saw this as well, Adam, while you were studying the queue, but one of the nice things was that nobody even bothered, nobody was bothered about queuing. Nobody cared. You know, I mean, as, I know as Brits, we love to queue. <laughs> you know, we, we all joke about it. We love a good queue. But the, the one thing that I found, everybody was just patient and everybody you know you, you saw people that you knew around the queue and you could just break off for a second go and say hi give give somebody a hug shake hands or whatever and it and it was you know it just it just happened it just moved flawlessly the way it was organized inside the arena and when i actually got inside the arena bowl it 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 stopped me in my tracks for a little while, I I, I apologise to anybody who was stood behind me because I did hold the, hold up the queue for a while because nobody wanted to to you know go around me, nobody wanted to jump in front of me, and I I just had to collect myself for a moment before I stepped over that threshold onto the onto the team benches, and it was 
but it's, it, it wasn't it wasn't shock per se it was just because it was so profound and I I am so I'm so grateful to the club for, for, for them getting it so right so then the club deserve every accolade and every acknowledgement that's coming their way for the way they've handled this they had to hit a proverbial home run they've not just hit the home run they've hit the home run when it when it when it absolutely it's almost been like clockwork it's and you can't prepare for something like this so the fact that they've been able to pull this off the, the speech that Kevin and Omar gave at the the, yeah. the, 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 the memorial the, the, the speech that Kevin gave on the Sunday yeah. that I mean that wasn't prepared he was he had a shopping bag in his hand yeah. Yeah, he did. you know what I mean he knew that somebody had to step forward yeah. on behalf of the team and say their Something. thoughts yeah. can, I, can I just say I mean, we weren't aware of, obviously, the movements of the Panthers players and staff during the week. And then, obviously, you know, Omar and Kevin appear at Adam's memorial in Hibbing. Uh, and I just wanted to sort of, like, give them both the biggest shout-out possible because that must have been incredibly hard for both of them, you know, to go... He's, he's played with us for, like, what? Three months, four yeah, months, exactly. And and they knew they would they on on the basis of his hockey career and everybody that was there. We were a small, insignificant part of that. But my God, they they nailed that. They nailed it. They nailed it. Um, and yeah, you know, I gotta say, you know, it gave me goosebumps actually when I was listening to that. It really did because they got a great reaction. Yeah, yeah. But to think they're going into an arena that they've never been to. They're going into an environment that they're completely unfamiliar with. They're surrounded by, you know, Adam's friends and family and, you know, fellow college alumni and players that Adam would have played with, you know, and, and they're flying out over there to, you know, give eulogies at his memorial. I cannot give enough respect and admiration to, you know, Kevin and Omar because that would have taken guts. You know, that would have taken a lot of emotional reserves to go out there and do what they did and represent the club so, so well, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that everyone that was at the memorial and everybody that was watching from all around the world, you know, probably are the same view that, that those two, you know, just got the right tone. You know, like Ant said, Adam Johnson was only a Panther for a few months. So in some ways, they didn't really have a lot to talk about, you know, when you consider that Adam's family, well, friends... The fact that they had a lot to talk about exactly. shows you what the character he was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was going to say, you know, in those short months, he obviously made a massive impression. And, you know, you just got a sense of that from what both Omar and Kevin said. And, yeah, I mean, at that point... Yeah, I don't think I've ever, ever been as proud of the Nottingham Panthers as a hockey club, as an organisation. You know, we've won trophies before, we've won a league, you know, we've, you know, been in uncharted territory when it's come to, you know, winning titles in Europe. But, you know, all of those things almost pale into insignificance at the side of what those two did to represent the club on the biggest stage during that memorial. It's moved Omar another another step up in my estimation and, and I, I mean I've liked everything that I've seen from Kevin Moore and you know to now anyway and, and again it's it's moved him a step up. And... I am yeah I mean I, I'm not gonna say that you know I'm not I, I don't want to downplay Omar's part in this because Omar Pash is a good talker. He know he he's got a very good way with words. He knows you know he's very measured in, in what he says to people and how he says things to people. He's very, he's very considered. Um, but, yeah, we, 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 got a, we got a picture, we got a window into our coaching staff, didn't we, with Kevin Moore. Kevin Moore's speech, I, I was... My jaw hit the floor in my own home. Um, I, 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 was, I was absolutely blown away because his use of words yeah. is so intelligent. I think that... The leadership that he showed 
in the aftermath of what happened on the Sunday at the arena and then at the memorial a few days later. It's so reassuring for me as an ordinary fan to know that we've got characters like that in the inner sanctum, in the sort of the very close confines of the group. Didn't you say, Tina, that um, you you know after listening to Kevin Moore, you'd you'd, got, you'd run through walls for him? Or... I would follow. I would follow that man into battle, quite frankly. <laughs> of course you would, because he'd make you feel fifty feet tall. Yes. You know, and he struck the right notes. He said the right things. I mean, fair play to him. He would have been grieving just as much as anybody else in the organisation. Of him to front up, face the cameras on Sunday, uh, you know, in a completely alien situation for him and, you know, the players that also sort of appeared. Uh, you know, my, my respect will be, you know, never-ending for him. You know, whatever happens from this point forwards, you know, if he stayed in Nottingham for a year... If he stayed in Nottingham for 20 years and became a club legend, you know, I, I still have the same amount of respect for him for not, and I don't know how to say this correctly, not an on ice matter, yeah. but an on, oh, sorry, uh, off ice matter uh, that, you know, was born out of something so tragic that did happen on ice. So, you know, I'm not quite sure I can find the words really in the, the various sort of. Uh, you know, praise and right. I don't. I don't think there are any words. I think. I think everybody. Everybody said all the words. That's the thing. You know. And and, and when something like this has happened, sometimes you fail to articulate it properly, and you don't want to do it an injustice. So I. I, I completely understand what you're saying. So just we'll just move to looking forward now. I think so. It would appear the club have made a commitment to play. And I think that is a very positive move. Whether it's the right move will will depend on the individuals and, and the continued support they receive and, you know, every, the people around them, basically. So, I, you know... Obviously, as hockey fans, it's good that our team have found it in themselves to be able to continue. So the the very first thing we we really do need to acknowledge is the Manchester Storm agreeing to continue, essentially, with the fixture that isn't supposed to happen. They could very easily look to, you know, get another league game in there instead. But but, but, But they've said, no, we will provide the, the Nottingham Panthers team with a with, with ice time a, you know game time which will allow them to ease themselves back no, into playing no, I mean uh, we've had we've had our, our battles with Ryan Finity when he was a player in particular oh, some, some absolutely terrific battles as a coach but you know the, the him and Corey you know going at each other as a coach, I told him many times that his ball spot was coming along lovely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and as a GM, I don't, I don't doubt that there's, there's, there's no kinship, there's no love loss between the two organisations. But after, after this, I think it can only strengthen the ties between the clubs, anyway. And they're, they're, like you said, Tina, they're, they're cooperation in playing this fixture giving a way for because they they would have played a couple of games by mm-hmm. then and you know they're back into maybe not back up to you know the the full strength or or what have you but you know they're they're back and they kind of get back into the daily routine if you like to give our lot the chance to play a game that means nothing just to get it out of the way and done with uh, at a time you know in the middle of a in the middle of a busy busy season. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know what you mean about it means nothing, but it means everything. You know, and I'm sure you know the players. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. The players on that Manchester roster. Okay, you know they don't have the closeness to what happened that our players do and always will have. But you know they are ice hockey players, and Adam Johnson was one of them. You know, is one of their own. So I think that those players on the Manchester roster will feel quite proud, actually, to be part of an event that is there primarily to celebrate the life and the career of, of Adam Johnson. 
And these are the things that just the humble ice hockey fan like us three around the table will never forget. You know, these are the sorts of things that, you know, are almost higher than being called classy. You know, I don't know what the term above being classy is, but... You know, so, but it's there. But it's there, you know, and if somebody can come up with a, a term that's higher than classy, then please let us know. But, you know, we'll never forget these sort of... We'll never forget the gestures that have been made by clubs and by individuals that have shown us so much goodwill, you it's know, shown, in the days. The, the acknowledgement. I mean, there's, there's no ill will come out from any of the clubs about our decision to pull out the cup, which, I, uh, you know, t- f- from a fixture point of view, is, for me... I mean, we we brought up the, the potential. We have we have talked we, about this a lot, before, haven't before we? Before it actually happened, yeah. and that, even that was just about freeing updates just to get yeah. league games in. But, yeah. but it gives the team an extra thing, and yeah. the fact that the league has pulled together how it has is 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 phenomenal. I can't wait until player finals weekend when everybody's there together. And we can start having arguments with each other again. <laughs> Have a little bit of normality, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the minute, I don't see there as being 10 separate teams in the Elite League. No. I see there being one team. And I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but I think that team is basically Team Elite League. You know, we've all, we've all sort of seen how clubs have gone, you know, over and above the call of duty to, you know, give up home dates or arrange rearrange fixtures it's amazing you know it really is and it's, it's quite humbling actually to see the lengths that other organisations have gone to to help facilitate us and you can't know can't say thank you enough time this can you you can't say thank you enough time just the like, like a broken record. I mean the, the, just the email that I received from the Five Flyers uh, when they when they refunded us for, for our tickets it wasn't just the stock copy and paste email they'd actually taken the time to put a personal message on there Think, things like that it's been it's been unreal it's been heartwarming yeah. we, we, that, that word has come up a lot I mean, no, we, 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 we tried to didn't we? We, we we got approached by reporters on the Sunday yep. Tina um, you did a phenomenal job by the way of, of, of coping with that because I I was trying to, I was trying to come up with the right words. I wouldn't have said the right thing. You, you were brilliant on that. So thank you very much, Tina, for, for stepping up. Well, there. I mean, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but um, we were trying to explain to one reporter about the playoff finals weekend, about how it's like only four teams make the weekend, but there are fans from ten teams that come, and not just the ten teams. There are teams, the fans that come from. Um, you know, there used to be fans that come from like Hamburg, didn't they? Um, I don't know if they still come now, but fans that come from the uh, na- uh, National League teams and what. And everybody comes together. You get probably, if you think about it, probably close to ten thousand people together, all supporting different people. But there is just one community. Everybody gets along well together. Yes, of course, you've got Mickey taking and what have you. You know, every time I see Paddy, I just have a have a have a laugh in. Uh, We'll talk about like when he, when he fell asleep in the in the corridor of his hotel room and stuff like you know and things like that. <laughs> but they, they, it was very strange getting that reaction, like because they expect some expect like uh, well why are your fans hanging around together? They, they saw the reaction between like when the Sheffield fans came and the you know Tina, Jono, Zara, myself, first people to go up to speak to them and things like that. I was like they they seeing rival fans cooperate so well was alien almost and it was trying to explain that to outsiders out, outsiders is the wrong term but it's the best thing I can think of right now yeah. Some, somebody who doesn't know about UK hockey yeah, it's, yeah it because, was, because UK ice hockey is different isn't it you know as Ant said we've all got rivalries you know we, we've all got you know teams that we might not like but I feel like over the last few days, that's all, that's all sort of gone away a little bit. And it will return, you know, as we move forwards over the days, weeks and months. You know, those rivalries will come back and, you know, we'll think more about the hockey and we'll think more about the fact that we'd like to beat Sheffield one of these days, you know. One day, one day, one day, <laughs> one day, day yeah, it'll happen, it'll happen. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 
But um, I think at the moment it's just sort of overwhelming to, to think about, you know, how everyone is so in it together. You know, and I've, I've never, never, ever experienced this level of unity amongst everybody in British ice hockey, you know, from, from all parts of the UK. And it is, as I, I think I've used the word already several times, but it is really humbling. It really is. And, you know, we're the centre of this. And, you know, I've got to say, nobody wants to be the centre of this. You know, when tragedies have happened in ice hockey before, they've always been, you know, someplace else, you know, on the other side of the world. And we've always, like watched from afar and you know and, the, and thought how tragic that exactly. is and oh you know I hope this never happens exactly. here and it doesn't happen here it happens but, but, elsewhere yeah, it happens but, somewhere I mean, else this, this season alone we started the season the hockey community lost Mike Hammond GB superstar yeah. what what was the last thing he did in UK hockey oh he scored a worldie helping get GB back up to the top table Alex Graham mm-hmm. and what what his friends and family and that team must be going through yeah. and now this this has been one kick in the nuts after another yes. this has probably you know brought everything to tea but again I just the thanks the overwhelming thanks that I've got an appreciation that I've got for every single person who has been in touch with us whether they've wanted to get a story for their national newspaper or not they've all taken the time to say sorry or, and, and it's just weird. Mm. People apologise. Why? Why are people apologising to, to to me? Or yeah, to, well, yeah. Why is everybody offering their condolences to us? We didn't know him. We, yeah, ex- exactly. And this but, is. But this we did. Back. But we kind of did because you know through the interviews and through watching watching the players play, we get we, we get a window into what we want to see. I remember we were talking to one of the reporters on Sunday, and she started asking about um, Adam's partner, and we just flat out said, "That's not our business." That's that we don't know about that because that's not what we're here for. The the players' private lives are, are just that, and we're not interested in that. We he, we come here to the rink to watch them play hockey. Whatever else goes on, that's their business. We are a fit, we are, I mean, as a hockey community, because the the because the sport is so minor in the UK, we are a fiercely protective bunch over you know. Our, our, our our teams and, and, and what have you and our, and our our sport. I mean, we can call the, the Sheffield Steelers fans whatever we want, but if a non-hockey fan does it, get out of my way. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't think I've got anything more that I want to say no. other than to every single hockey fan that went to a game last weekend. Well done. Thank you to the teams that played. Thank you for bringing some normality back to the other podcast teams around the UK who have who have done their own side of the story on that and what have you. Thank you to those Sheffield Steeler fans that are going that are going to Manchester tomorrow and then stepping foot in their arena on Sunday. My heart, I think the heart of Nottingham, is with you. We will get through this together. There is a future. As, as Adam Johnson, as a hockey player, would not want the world to stop because of what has happened. It is an important step that we've taken playing this game against Manchester. I'm gutted, I can't be there. I'll be there in spirit, obviously. But just thank you to everybody that's been a part of it and that has got back on it. And, yeah, no, I, you know, can only echo those emotions and those comments from, you know, it's... I think we've all been hit, haven't we, in the last few days? You know, we've, we've all been hit hard emotionally and you know it's, it's, it's been difficult for us all um, and you know as a fan I've asked myself several times you know have I got the right to grieve you know because the people that have got the closest links to Adam were the guys that shared a locker room with him the coaching staff those that sort of said hello to Adam and, you know, engaged in sort of small talk every day, you know, at the rink. 
they're the people that my heart absolutely goes out to because they are the ones that were naturally closest to Adam in an ice hockey sense. Me as a fan, I never met Adam other than watching him from the stands in the arena. He was a bloody good player, an amazing player. You know, we saw that. We saw how hard he worked to, you know, realise his dream by getting to the NHL. Uh, didn't sort of take the conventional route to the NHL. Had to work bloody hard to get there. But, you know, spoke volumes about him as a person, that he was so committed, so hard-working, um, and made it, you know, and, and scoring that goal for Pittsburgh, you know, that would have been incredible for him. But anyway, I mean, it's it's hard for a fan. I mean, I don't know how to react fully. I'll be honest, I was uncomfortable about being in this podcast. You know, uh, I sort of argued with myself in my own mind, do I want to be part of it? Will I be able to convey what I feel the right way? Um, will I do myself justice? Will I do the three of us justice on the podcast? Um, so it was a hard hard sort of thing to be part of this and you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to struggle with this for a long time you know this will be with me for a long time um, and I just wanted to say one last thing you know I haven't touched upon the Sheffield fans that are going to the games this weekend I want to extend that to the Sheffield players as well who were you know part of the game uh, not last Saturday this Saturday before um, you know, they saw it at very, very close quarters, unfortunately. And, you know, my heart goes out to them as well. And they would have been going through, God only, know, God only knows what emotions over the last few days. And, you know, we've not mentioned him by name this podcast, but I've spent a lot of time thinking about Matt Petgrave over the last few days. And I'm sure we all have, you know, in the ice hockey community, because that guy must be going through the mill at the minute. And, the, res and the responsibility of what he's having exactly. to bear at the moment must be overwhelming. Exactly. And, you know, I, I just, I can't say enough about how, how much I want that organisation to put their arms around Matt, wrap him in cotton wool, provide him with all the support he needs, just take care of him, look after him, we all know what happened was a tragic accident, despite what some morons on the on the world of social media said. But I don't want to dwell on those because you know they're they're not worth they're not worth the oxygen that I'm actually using to talk about them. So let's let's just sort of let, let's just yeah let's move on from that. But yeah, um, I just hope everything is okay for Sheffield. Well, of course, it's not okay for Sheffield, but I hope this weekend passes off as well as it possibly can so just to close this podcast I, th I think we've we all thought that this would be a lot shorter than it actually is um, I think it's been incredibly therapeutic for the three of us we've had a lot of friends around us who we've been able to talk about all of this with and I would encourage each and every person that has been involved or has been affected and moved by this to talk to somebody. If, if you have friends, use your friends. If you don't have friends, please, the, all the clubs, all the clubs and, you know, your, your local health services have tools available to you. And I would just like to say, if, you know, just a, a few things that probably echo what Ant and Adam have already said, but... The, the, the ice hockey community is incredibly special. We have shown that with the way that we have come together, the unity that we've showed. And I would like us to be able to move on from this, protect our players, make sure that we do everything necessary so as we, we're not talking about this again. The players of both teams involved, I hope, and I, I fully believe they have the support that they need. I would like to see the, the players, certainly, the off-ice staff, coaching staff, medical staff. And we've not actually mentioned them, you know, not name-checked anybody. 
um, or mention them collectively, but the officials as well, who were who were present that day. You know, they 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 will all be changed irrevocably. But I hope that they are able to positively move on, and they're able to they're able to return to a rink when they feel ready to do so. I think it might be fitting to finish this podcast by actually raising a toast to Adam Johnson. Indeed. So, to Adam. To Adam. Forever Panthers number 47. Thank you very much for listening. Just one closing statement. All three of us around this table, we send our most sincere condolences and all the love to Adam's loved ones. There are no words that can replace your loss, but please, if you can, find comfort in the good times. Thank you for listening. We'll be back. <laughs>